Today I went to NAMM 2024 and I saw a lot of really, really cool stuff and stuff that I just want to show off through this video. A lot of the stuff that you're going to see in these clips are just stuff that I, you know, happened to be recording as I walked by. And then after that, I'm going to give a breakdown on every trumpet that I tried from all of the different companies and give little mini reviews based on what I liked and what I didn't like, including the 825 trumpet. I tried the trumpet, the BAC, the one that Boston Crusaders or BAC used in their season this past year. And so I'm just going to give my comments on those trumpets at the end of the video. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy the video and let's take a look at all the stuff I saw in NAMM today. The first thing I did when I got there was go check the directory to see all the stuff that I could go to. And after looking at that, I realized it would just be too much to do in one day. So first I just ended up when going down to the instrumental exhibition, the wind instrumental exhibition. This is the Dennis Wick booth, tons of mutes and mouthpieces. Really cool to see all of that stuff in one place, especially because you don't really find that at your local music store all the time. This is the Victory booth. They seem to be a newer company. Their instruments were all right. I wasn't a big fan. This is the Mute Caddy. There was really, really cool Mute Caddies. This is definitely something that I'm probably gonna have to get for myself, especially for jazz, because having like seven mutes at once is not very fun. That would be really helpful. This was the Picket Booth. Um, some really, really cool mouthpieces and trumpets. It was really awesome to see some of that stuff in one place, especially those mouthpiece like modifier sets. Like that thing is awesome right there. And it was really cool to see, you know, again, so much cool stuff in one place. This is the Shoki booth. These were some really, really incredible trumpets. I don't know if I left a review on those. I guess we'll see at the end of the video, but look how many mouthpieces are there in one place. Never seen them before. This is from one of those Chinese manufacturers. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of, of a lot of the instruments from those, but I just thought it was really cool to see some transparent plastic saxophones. I didn't even know they made plastic saxophones. But this is the Jean-Paul booth. I tried this trumpet as well. It was okay. Another look at the Victory booth. Just so many instruments. They were well built, but I just wasn't a fan of their the playing that they had. I'm not really sure which company this was from. This was just one of the booths that was out there. I didn't try any of these horns, but they all looked really pretty. Again, not really not really sure about this company, but you know, it was just some really cool horns. I'm trying to remember who this was. This was a French horn booth. I want to say it might have been Conselmer. Yeah, it looks like it was Conselmer. So this was King, some French horns. And then I realized after that this was not actually a mellophone. This was a marching French horn, which I didn't even know they made anymore. And then there was a mellophone next to it. More saxophones, just a whole bunch of woodwind instruments. I didn't get to try any of them. I'm not a woodwind player, so I wasn't really too interested, but I just thought it would be cool to show that off. And then this is the 825 booth from BAC. So these are the battery instruments that they had. And those were actually kind of nice to look at. Like that is something that looks really, really cool. I, I love the black look of that. That's awesome. And then they have the low brass instruments as well. This is the 825 low brass. So you have the mellophone, actually the, the baritone or the euphonium and the, the contra. Really beautiful instrument. I, I like the way that that Contra hook is built. I didn't get any videos of the BAC 825 trumpets. I don't know why, but I did try it out and, and I'll talk about that at the end of the video. This is the Cannonball booth. The, these trumpets right here, these three were the prototypes. Super impressive. I'm going to talk about that too. This was the, I think it's called pronounced Fainthem. Just some really cool looking instruments. I didn't play any of them, but they were super awesome and they were sitting there. They The booth was full that whole night. And then we have, oh, I'm trying to remember who that was. This is the P-Bone booth, some uh, plastic trumpets. I tried both of those and I'm gonna talk about that too. Really cool instruments. This is, oh, this was super cool. So they were giving a performance and I just thought it was so awesome. Look at the, I guess, electric drums. I don't really know what you would call that, but he's playing it and it looks super awesome.
This was the Adams booth. Look how many trumpets there are. There are so many. This is probably where the majority of the trumpets at the exhibition were. Every single trumpet that I played from this booth was amazing. And that's because most of the ones that I tried out were the custom ones, uh, especially from this stand right here. Uh, actually, no, not that stand. This stand right here, where, where all of the trumpets were. And I looked at some of those low brass, but look how beautiful these instruments are. They had a lot of these ones of the non-polished brass, it looked like, and they were great. More flugel horns, and then some, that was a herald trumpet right there. Just amazing looking instruments. And they all were such great players. It was really, really fun hanging at that booth. That was there for like half an hour. Um, this, I, this is 100% for like a live performance type setting, but I thought it was super funny to see them on harnesses because I was thinking like drum corps could put like their synthesizers on a harness and march them around and maybe that would make old people happy a little bit, but it was really funny to check out. This is the Shires booth, a lot of low brass instruments. All of these instruments look beautiful. I'm kind of disappointed I didn't try any of the Shires stuff. This is the Air Force band. They had a lot of military bands there. But other than that, that's kind of all I saw. So let's talk about the trumpets that I played. So let's talk about trumpets. The first ones that I tried were at the 825 booth or the, the BAC booth. I tried the 825 horn, the trumpet, the one that Boston Crusaders played. I personally really enjoyed it. I still have heard that a lot of the members at Boston Crusaders didn't actually like it, but to me it felt very open and it felt like the projection or at least the potential for projection was there. Um, obviously I don't spend like an hour with each of these horns so it's not like I'm going to get a full depth view on all of these, but I did like the A25 horn and so I give it like an A+. The next one I tried was from Victory. They have a lot of horns out there and I tried all of them. On all of them, I felt the same issues. I don't wanna bag on other brands, but I do have to say that the trumpets played like they were Jupiters. And if you've ever played on Jupiter, it kind of feels very stuffy, not their professional line, they're just all of their other ones. It feels very stuffy. It felt like it had a lot of back pressure and that the slotting wasn't quite there. Uh, in terms of price to what you're getting out of it, I would say that they may be worth it for a high school band to purchase a full lot of instruments for themselves, but I wasn't a really big fan of them. The P-Bone Plastic Trumpets. For those trumpets, they were really, really interesting. The first one that I tried was the plastic trumpet that had a metal inline. That was the one on the right, I believe. And that one had a metal lead pipe and it had valves. I asked about the type of metal they were using I don't remember exactly what it was, but I believe he said it was a brass lead pipe and aluminum valves. The aluminum valves I'm a little bit sketch about. I don't know if that's true. And if it is, I don't really know if that's would be something that I would prefer in an instrument, but it played really, really well. Um, the only thing that I didn't like were the fill of the valves. And I assume that because it's aluminum, it's not gonna be the kind of metal that it really needs to be to push down and come up correctly. Maybe it just needed new springs but I wasn't a big fan of the feel of the valves. Otherwise it played really, really well for what a plastic instrument was. Definitely more than what I was expecting. As for the full plastic trumpet, so this was the trumpet that was only plastic. I wasn't a big fan. The, val the valves definitely felt better compared to the inline metal one, but it just, I didn't really like the feel of the instrument. It felt very wonky. It, the slotting wasn't really, really there. I would agree that maybe for a high school, not maybe not a high school, maybe like a very beginner band level with young kids, I can see why plastic trumpets may be preferred, but none of the trumpets had a third valve kick out. It had some weird slanting on some of the slides. I think they were good for what they were, but definitely not something that I would play on every day. The box Stradivarius models. So I tried five different box Stradivariuses. I tried two of the box uh, uh, Strad 72s and two of the 37s, or three of the 37s. So I tried the large bore 72s. So they had two different models and I wasn't really a big fan of it. I think for, I think they are really good instruments, but for my like preferences of instruments, I didn't really like them. They felt a lot closer to a Yamaha Zeno trumpet and they were kind of, they had a lot of back pressure. The slotting on them was really, really good but I don't like the back pressure portion of that. And that was something that they had. The 37s were really, really nice. They had both of all of the Stradivarius models were really, really super light. And that was something that kind of surprised me when I picked it up. It's probably lighter than almost all of the trumpets that I played that day, other than the plastic trumpet. 
but it was super light. It felt pretty good. I definitely preferred the sound and the feel of the 37 models to the 72 with the 37 ML probably being my favorite out of all of them. The, the medium large bore of the 37, it felt very clear. It didn't feel stuffy, almost no back pressure or the back pressure that was there was strictly for slotting purposes. There was an extra back pressure that I was feeling to, to push against. Really liked that instrument. And yeah, I would probably put those instruments on my list if I were looking to buy a new horn. So for the cannonball instruments, I've played cannonball instruments in the past. I never owned one, but I did try them out a lot when I was looking for a new horn because they were more affordable for me at that point. And one thing that cannonball has that I'm kind of not sure whether to like or not like is they have a very distinct warm, warm tone like warmer than any instrument that I've ever played. Sometimes I feel like the cannonball instruments play warmer than even like a cornet, for example. The, the sound of them is so distinct that I don't know if I would get it for multi-use purposes. You definitely have to have a strict use for what you want because of the sound that that horn gives. However, when I go to the prototype models, I tried one of them. They were all the same models. They just diff had different uh, lacquers on them the prototype models played like a dream. Honestly, I preferred the port prototype models that Cannonball's releasing. They're called the Model 92. And from what I was told, it's like somewhere between a 37, a Strad 37 and a Strad 43. So they're the, called the Model 92. And I tried them out. They played beautifully, played better than all of the box. They sounded better than the box, in my opinion. And I also talked with the guy that designed that horn and he was telling me a lot of stuff about how they're doing a lot of different things in the horn that are not really common. And so with those horns, I, I really enjoyed playing on them. And in the future, if I was ever in the market for another horn, that would probably be one of the ones that is on the top of my list. Really be looking out for that Cannonball Model 92. And then the last instruments that I tried were the Adams instruments. I was there for like a half an hour, as I already said. I tried out a ton of trumpets. I really wish that I brought my flugelhorn in my cornet mouthpiece with me because I would have loved to try some of those flugelhorns and cornets. But the professional line of Adams trumpets were really, really good. They were really good. They were up there with the Bach models and probably even the Cannonball prototype that I tried. But the, the custom trumpets, oh my God, every single custom trumpet that I tried was amazing. And they were way far out of my price range. They were around three to 4K. But I mean, it was just unbelievable how much better those custom trumpets were than all of the other trumpets that I tried that day. I had a lot of fun doing that. And I really hope that I can go next year again. And other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. If you liked this video, give me a like and subscribe. And the next video, we're gonna be go going back to talk about more drum corps stuff. Other than that, see ya. Mm -hmm.